Good morning, folks. We've got a look ahead at potential space weather, the top meteorological onslaughts around the globe, more on Beetlejuice, melting ice, and an FYI on climate science. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star very quiet. But over on the left, near and north of the solar equator, there is slight motion and growing brightness. We'll come back to that in a moment. Purple is solar wind speed, which continues dropping, but up top in blue. We are taking impact from the heliospheric current sheet. Just the edge, so it appears. But it is enough to bring slightly more on the KP index. Still all in the green, but a bit more up off the floor. Okay, back to the incoming limb on our star. Luckily, we can see what hides just out of view from here at Earth. The Stereo spacecraft, specifically Stereo A here, is currently positioned to see that side of the sun. And indeed, it's Stereo A seeing this shot taken this morning, revealing two bright points which appear to be active but not tremendously eruptive sunspot groups. These will turn into our view over the weekend. And by the way, in 2018, NASA stopped trying to reestablish connection with Stereo B after four years of no comms following its trip behind the sun. Should be able to reach it again here soon, though. They might want to start trying again. Quick weather notes begin in the UK, where flooding is expected to continue as the precipitation has reservations at the establishment over the coming days. In South America, they saw the mudslide coming. There just wasn't anything they could do about it. Damage is ugly, and at least three people have been confirmed lost. Ongoing as we speak is a major snowstorm running up the eastern seaboard. This is the storm that sent snow records tumbling out west days ago, and feet are expected in parts of the region here. Speaking of things that are cold, ESA has a permafrost tracking map. Unlike snow cover or sea ice, this has much less annual variation, offering a clearer window into the land-based frozen coverage. Now we'll come back to the meltwater momentarily, but just know it's not just glaciers sending cold fresh water into the sea. But first, we've got to go back to Beetlejuice. Just yesterday, we were laying out the potential for it to have already had a micronova, dimming its emission, and that potentially our great promised light show in the sky might not happen. Well, one more step down that staircase. Nice to see the Orion shoulder nickname catching on, but the impetus for the article was that astronomers see Betelgeuse coming back. After a considerable dimming, the star has begun to rebrighten once again. A fascinating but ultimately unhelpful bit of information since that is what would happen if either the micronova has occurred and it was fading fast, or if the multiple shell release before supernova paradigm is what's going on there. Sadly, we're just no closer to knowing what's going to happen over the coming weeks, months, years, etc. We are back to melting ice, however, and this is the most confusing article I've ever seen on it. They say that at the end of the last ice age, cold freshwater melt changed the North Pacific, causing major climate change. Here's the thing. They don't say if it was into the interglacial, the warmer period now, or right before the drop back down into the Younger Dryas. But there's more. They say that what's happening now is the opposite of what happened at the end of the last ice age, which couldn't be further from the truth. Back then it was melting ice, adding cold fresh water, and that is what's happening today. They also put a focus on the freshness, keeping the water nearer to the surface when I've seen other papers strongly focusing on the colder water temperature, sending it down to the bottom quickly. All in all, the message we can take away is that we should see a muted oceanic modulation of atmospheric temperatures, which means that the winter cold will be colder and the summer heat will be hotter. That is one consequence of a fresher ocean more extremes. And this is a good time for an informational on climate positions. Folks, there is not just mainstream climate story versus denial. There are absolutely those two things, and even among the denial comes different flavors like disbelief versus insincerity due to monetary interest like getting bought off by an oil company. But there is also this other group, and I call it the scientific dissent, and there are even three kinds of that. The first comes with monetary greed accusations and misdeeds on the other side, including some self-indicting claims from those on the inside, saying it's not science, including a claim like that from one of the very few men who started it all, Professor Emeritus Will Happer from Princeton. Who cares that it's on the PragerU channel? It's him talking. Him admitting the models are complete garbage. The more popular angle on that flavor comes from folks like Tony Heller, excellent source, correct information. It's just that I've always found the whole, you are a liar and you are a fraud, beginning to an argument leads to nowhere in these conversations when you're trying to change someone's mind. 
Now, a better way to go about this would be another one of the flavors. You just be so darn good at math that you can break down the models to their individual pieces and include fully interdisciplinary looks at the climate situation, mathematically proving there is no way to extract attribution in climate change at all, especially given the cloud uncertainties. That is a good way to go about it, even if nobody in mainstream news reports it. By the way, this same guy noticed the fraudulent models thing years ago and has been ignored for a very long time, this Dr. Frank. And then there is my flavor. I say you can have it all. I hate pollution, and I think humans' number one way to be better is to reduce how much we waste. It's just that these things can run astride of the climate science as environmental mandates without compromising the science that would otherwise let the Ice Age sneak up on an unaware people. Take every social, societal, and environmental pathway you want, but the science side has become a grant-baiting $30 billion a year business, more than a hundred times the amount spent on science to the contrary. University departments are built on it. Professors' lives are built on it. It is no less subject to greed than the oil side, but I'll play devil's advocate. I'll let them cheat. I'll take their word. I'll help your environmental arguments against toxic pollution. But the science is already changing. It's already changed. And this climate playlist you have linked below the video is the future of it all. In the scientists' own words. In the IPCC and NASA's own words. We can have both. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.